All right, so uh, it's been a long time coming, um, but I'm getting close to having a brand new section on the style library for Profi OS 4. Um, so I'm going to be adding a new accent light section. Um, accent lights present um, a lot of opportunities. So this is just going to be a starting point. Um, and actually, I've got more information coming. Um, but I wanted to, uh, essentially, I've got this demo rig here uh, set up. So I can kind of show accent light. So what I've got is I've got a five LED strip. Um, these styles can be used for more than five LEDs. They can be used for single. LED, uh, single. I'm using NeoPixels, um, but they they'll run on everything. It's just for kind of standardizing. Since the PCBs have five pixels, I made this little guy here. Um, I see some people when they have the you know the nice chassis and all that. They've got uh, particularly Megtooth and a few others that I've seen. They've got the uh, NeoPixels wrapped inside of it, um, so you can also create kind of a coil with uh, NeoPixel strips. Um, so obviously the effects look a little bit different, they're going to run a little bit different. Um, and then again, you can also run these on individual LEDs. So I've got individual NeoPixels here in my uh, Luke ROTJ. Um, and what you're looking at right now, this is the first style, so this is the one I get the question for the most. This is the cave scene from Return of the Jedi, which was the deleted scene. This is the green blinking sequence, so you'll see it here. And what it is is it's nine blinks, and then it goes off. And while it's off, the red one runs. So uh, what I've done for demonstration purposes is in the uh, the alternate. So when I turn this blade on, it's going to go to the red sequence. So and with uh, the new uh, accent style builder, what it'll be is you'll actually have the ability to set the on uh, activity and the off. You can have them be the same. Um, there'll also be controls for if you want it to be change color, if you want it to always stay the same color. So if you have color change in your blade, you may not want your accents to change color. Um, so you have the uh, you'll have the option to change the color or not. Um, related to color change, there's also going to be a number of effects in there. There's also transition, so a lot to go through. So I'm going to kind of demo uh, with this little rig guy, just because I don't have a lot of um, sabers with actual uh, accent lights, except for this guy who I have going in the background. Um, so I'm going to run through kind of a, a big list of what's going to be available in the library at launch, but there will be more coming. Um, and again, it's really only limited to, uh, you know, imagination. So this is just kind of a starting point. I've seen some things um, uh, on other sabers. I've been thinking of things on stuff um, and then just kind of playing around with what's possible. So uh, the first ones you're seeing here, this is the red, the Luke Red ROTJ sequence. And then if I turn the blade off, it'll go to the green ROTJ sequence. And If you had these pixels like I do here separately wired, what this style would be for the green, the red version would be for the red. If you have it, um, it, it all depends. So that's the thing with accents. It's all going to depend how you're wiring it and also how you plan to style it. So um, all of these, everything I've set up is based on NeoPixel, um, including these guys. Um, they will run on regular LEDs as long as they're connected to one of the, the, the LED pads where you can style it. If you just hook it up uh, the other ways where it's just always got power, it's not going to run these effects. So if you want to run effects on your accents, either NeoPixel or LED, you are going to want to wire them so that you can style them. And then the style library, when it's done, um, will have a new accent light section with a ton of options that you'll be able to choose. You'll be able to get that style code loaded up and just have a bunch of stuff. So uh, this will be a longer video just because there's a lot in this library. I'm still finishing the interface, um, but once it's done, I'll have it launched. But I... Uh, I've been getting more questions about accents, and I've seen more questions about accents, so I wanted to put this out there for everyone. All right, so this is uh, the first one, like I said, the Luke ROTJ sequence. Um, up next is uh, Turbine, which is a popular one, and Megtooth does his own version of this. Um, so we'll switch. Um, so this is, while it's off, this is what I'm calling the, the slow turbine. Um, so you'll see it looks different on the PCB because the PP, PC, uh, tongue -tied, PCB is circular. And then on the straight one, it's going to be linear. Um, but it's the exact same effect. These are running on the same pads. Ignore the rat's nest of wires because it's all temporary. Um, it's, uh, but same styles will run on both of these. But this way you can kind of see how it would look on a PCB if you wanted to run these your PCB as an accent. Another caveat, your PCB has to be wired separately or uh, set up for one of the, ver uh, the versions where you can give it its own style. Um, otherwise, if you have it uh, where it's um, in parallel, or in, if it's in series and you use a subblade, you can do it. But if it's in parallel to your main blade, it's going to take on your main blade effects. Um, so a lot of this will depend on your wiring and your config. 
Um, but so you can see same effect running. Now when I ignite my blade, so this is while it's off, when I ignite my blade, you'll see the turbine effects speed up and it'll go from the slow turbine to the fast turbine. So, and I know Megtooth has his own version that's probably similar to this. Um, his might be a little different because I know he put a lot into it, um, but this is kind of my version of that effect. Um, and then when you power down with this, it will slow itself back down. Actually, I haven't looked. How's the light look? Is it washing out? It's washing out a little bit uh, just because it's so bright I have no diffusion here. Um, all right, so up next, these are going to be what I call runs. So there's a, a slow run and a fast run, and there's also a forward and backward, so there'll be several options. Um, so this is a slow run forward, and this is while it's off. And, of course, you can choose all your colors. Um, and uh, either make it match your blade, be completely different. As I said, you can do color change. And then when I turn this on, it'll go from a slow run uh, forward, so being this direction, to a fast run forward. And again, depending on how you have these laid out on your hilt or where you have them, they'll all look a little bit different, as you can see here. Um, and then we'll go back to the slow run forward. And now this is going to be the slow run reverse, so this will go backwards. So this one goes backwards. And uh, when it's off, I have it set to be slow. And when it's on, I have it set to be fast. Again, you're going to have the option to choose the off behavior, the on behavior separately, however you want. You can mix and match all of these styles. Um, there's also transitions, uh, which I think I have in the next uh, style. But So this is the slow run reverse while it's off. And then when it's on, that's the slow run rever uh, fast run reverse. And now up next, this is going to be the heartbeat while it's off. So it's got a pulse and then a fade. Uh, that's for the heartbeat. And then when I turn this one on, it's going to turn into a rising bar graph. So this one goes up and down as a bar graph. And that had a fade transition, so I don't know if you saw it, but there's some of them you can choose to be an instant, which means that as soon as you hit ignite, it's going to switch to the on behavior. Um, and then you can also use all the different transitions. So I'm going to start with a fade, wipe, wipe in, and the color cycle. And then over time, we'll add to that as well. Um, but so when I change this back to off um, or retract the blade, you'll see a fade uh, back to the heartbeat. So it faded to the heartbeat. And you can extend all the transition times. You can extend this. You can change the speeds. Um, you'll be able to edit all of that in the editor. Um, I didn't make the speeds and all that editable in the library just because the interface is already pretty complex. Um, so everything's going to have default timings, and then you can just go into editor and change them as you need. Um, again, kind of meant to be starting points for everyone. All right. So now we will go. This is going to be a center out graph. So it starts wherever your center pixel is. Now, obviously, on a circle, it's hard to see the center, but that's the center there. And then, obviously, in a strip, you can see where the center is. And then when I uh, ignite, it turns into a center in. So it's going to come from the outside in. So that's a center in ignition. And again, it'll look different depending on how you have everything and if you had a longer strip. And then also, um, it's going to be a little harder to show this, but you also have the option to add blast, clash, lockup, and lightning block effects where the accents will get uh, affected by those different things. So um, I think I'm active now, so if I hit, I'll get the blast. So that's a blast effect. Now because of this rig, I don't know if I can, it kind of takes clash. So you get a clash effect, and then let's see if we can get lockup to work. So that's the lockup effect. And then we'll do a lightning block. So that's a lightning block effect. So you can add all those effects that your accent LEDs also react to those different effects. Um, you can, we can add any effects. I was just thinking about what would be realistic for your hilt to react to. So blast, clash, lockup, and lightning block are the ones that I set. Um, but if any, technically any effect can be set up um, to be able to run on your accents if you want. All right. So next up, I'm losing track here. So let's uh, retract. So that's the back to center out. And now this is another bar graph. This is going to be the split bar graph. 
So this one starts in the middle and moves away in both directions. So you'll see it moving both directions. And then when I ignite, it's going to be, I'm calling this a vortex, so it's going to be like the color sucking into the middle. So it's going to start at the outsides and keep pulling back into the middle. So that's the vortex. So uh, bar graphs in particular, you can do so many different things. So that's why I've got so many options here. So you got center out, center in, um, the rising bar graph, uh, the split bar graph, the vortex bar graph, um, but just so many options with that. Uh, and then so back to that. And then this one, uh, this is the kit scanner. So Knight Rider. Um, so this one's got your red going back and forth. So I know that's a popular one. You can use this as blade styles too. Obviously all this code you can use for more than just accent LEDs. Um, and then this one is going to change to uh, an audio level bar graph. So what's going to happen is it's it uses the sound which I don't have a speaker hooked up right now to actually set the height of your bar graph. So when I ignite, you'll see it goes high, and then when it gets into the hum, it'll stay a little lower. And then if you get like your blast, um, well, blast effect is covering it, but it, it reacts to sound. Um, so if you have a larger, uh, I can't swing this, if you have swings or whatever, this bar graph will actually react to the, um, the sound level. So right now, because the hum is so low, it's only got a single pixel. Um, so that's the audio level bar graph. It reacts to the actual sounds that are playing on the saber at the time. Again, I can't demo it. No speaker on this yet. Uh, so we'll turn this guy off. And then that had a fade, and it went back to my uh, kit scanner. And now this one's similar. This is the VU meter. Um, so the VU meter uh, reacts to sounds also whether the blades are on or off. So when it's off, you'll see that. But now when I turn the blade on, you see the VU, VU meter, and it goes green, yellow, red as a real VU meter. And then that hum is not making a ton of noise right now, so that's why you get that. But when I go to retract, you'll see it spike again. So that's that VU meter. So if you wanted to have that along the side uh, as a uh, an accent. And then I've got several battery level options. So if you want to use your accents as a battery level monitor, you can. Um, so this first one, uh, this one is... This is set to be based on the, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, this is the level meter. So this is, uh, this one's going to be hard to show. What this is, is the, the out of the five pixels, it's meant to be kind of like a, a, you know, a level for carpentry. So I don't know how this is going to react to moving. But as you change your blade angle, it will slide those pixels along. So this one's a little tricky. In your hilt, it'll be better. Um, but it'll slide so when you're perfectly parallel and just because this is all a rat's nest it's not laying perfectly parallel uh, when your blade is perfectly level the uh, pixel in the middle will be lit and then as you angle up or down it'll change that um, so just kind of a an interesting use using responsive control um, so again test rig isn't going to show it perfectly uh, then let's see so now this should be, oh, this is the battery level. So this is a bar graph battery level. So out of four out of five pixels are lit. That means that I'm at pretty good percentage. And as your battery drains, the, the number of pixels will drop. Um, so if it was full charge, it would be all five lit. Um, but I've been doing a lot of testing, so I've already drained some of that. Um, and you can pick the color you want for this one. And then when it's ignited, I've got the battery level set as the green to yellow to red. Um, so right now you can see actually yeah, it's a little yellow because uh, I've been using the battery for a little while. Um, so it'll go, it'll start out green when you're at full power, yellow when you're mid uh, medium, and when the battery gets low it'll actually just change red. Um, so that's the battery level in green, yellow, red. And then that's the percentage. And then this one here, this is going to be, uh, this is a dim one. So uh, as your battery drains, these accent LEDs will slowly dim um, until they basically turn off when your battery is too low. Um, so they'll be the brightest at full, and then over time they will dim. So these are, I think this is actually deep sky blue, so it's already dimmed a little bit. Uh, again, the camera's probably washing it out, um, but again, it's probably you know a little bit less, uh, say, 80% battery level or something, so it's dimmed it already. And then on this one, these are, so the other piece of this in the lot style library is going to be actually timed um, effects, either on or off. And you can choose to have it always continuous, which means that unless you have like idle time offset in your config, the, the accents will always run. 
Um, but I've set it up so you can also, in your style, set whether you want those LEDs to be timed or not. And the, the timing uh, is going to be set for uh, 30 seconds. Um, so that just went off, So and I had it set for that. So it'll run when you boot up, when you change the font, uh, or when you uh, retract a blade. Uh, you can set them to run, and it's defaulted to 30 seconds, um, 30,000 milliseconds. And then it'll turn itself off. So this way, if you want to save your battery, if you want those accent LEDs to not always be on, and that goes for, you can also set it when the blade is on. You can actually set a timer for now when the blade is on for it to run out. Um, but now if I turn my blade on, I'll get this effect. I don't think I set the timer on here. Um, this is the, the turbine effect um, running. But you can set those timers um, to, if you don't want your accents to stay on all the time, whether the blade's on or off, you can set a timer to actually have them time themselves out and turn off um, just to save the life of the battery so it turns those styles off. So they'll run for 30 seconds if you want to set them to a minute, however you want to set it. Um, you just change the, the timings um, built into the style and it'll turn itself off. Um, and then finishing up, these are going to be pretty simple to finish up. Let's uh, turn you back. So that's the slow turbine. Uh, actually, that might be the slow run. Uh, too many styles. All right, so now just straight blinking. Um, there's two blinking options. There's a blinking on off and a blinking off on. So if you had two accents next to each other, um, like this one's obviously the specific one, but if you wanted accents to alternate, you can set one up to be blinking on off and you can set the other one uh, to be blinking off on. And so this one's uh, got a fade on it. Oh, and then this is the last option, which is just a pulse. Um, so that's something popular. So it's just a pulse. Um, so the library is not quite done yet, so it's not launched yet. Um, I'll do a separate announcement when it's launched. Um, just because uh, th this is actually going to be, it's getting away from uh, how the other styles are built just to make it a little more flexible. Um, so it's taking me a little bit of time getting it, uh, all the bugs worked out of it. But the accent library will be coming. It'll be part of the style library. It's just going to be a separate section. Um, so in your normal library, you can pick your main blade, your cross guard blades, your crystal code um, for each effect. And then the accents will just be separate because the accents are a lot different in, in how you set them up um, because the accents can be anything. Now, I will, I'm will i going to put a note also when this releases. You can set your accents to actually mimic your main blade. Uh, typically what I tell people is either use the side blade code, uh, the cross guard code, or the crystal chamber code um, for any style. So say you have an unstable blade effect, you want your accents to be unstable, you're not going to use the accent builder. To get that unstable effect, use either the cross guard for that unstable effect or the crystal chamber. The crystal chamber has the off behavior in it, so you can choose that. Um, and that'll let you set your accents to be the same as your blade. Um, the accent LED uh, style builder is more for if you want accents to be separate, doing unique things, um, and not the same as your main blade. Um, and you can always mix and match all of this stuff, so um, you know it'll be uh, available to play around with. But uh, lots of stuff coming. And again, this is kind of just the start point. Even though I think I have 25 or 26 individual setups, plus you get the color change options, all the blast and uh, all the effects related to it. So lots and lots of options just when this kicks off, and then we'll be actually building that up um, for more options. So um, for all you who are out there, you know, planning out your Saber builds, if you've got places for accents, you want to use NeoPixel accents, you want to set this kind of stuff up, I do have a library coming. Um, and as soon as it's ready, it'll be launched, but I just wanted to share with everybody, um, you know, and uh, hope you enjoy.